History made as Florida's governor and Senate candidates do combined final election eve campaign event for the LGBTQ plus community. Yesterday on the eve of the election day, Queer News Tonight was present at a historic gathering of political candidates and personalities. We broadcast Queer News Tonight last night on the site. Celebrity speakers included Malcolm D. Lee, the director of Welcome Home, Roscoe Jenkins, Girls Trip, and Space Jam, A New Legacy, as well as Haitian comedian Success Jr. on hand to speak where or were a slew of politicians, including Florida Representative Marie Woodson, who introduced Florida gubernatorial candidate Charlie Chris, Florida's Commissioner of Agriculture Nikki Freed, and U.S. Representative Debbie Wasserman Schultz, who introduced the candidate for U.S. Senate Val Demings. Broward is a very important area for Democrats today in today's election, as Commissioner Freed stated in her speech, saying, quote, 2018, you came through. You came through and elected the first statewide elected Democrat in almost two decades. You came through to make sure every ballot was counted. And at the end of the two long weeks of a recount, we were able to win by 6,753 votes because of Broward County. So we're asking uh, Broward to do it again, end quote. And remember that 6,700 uh, total was out of 8 million. Last night as we uh, did this historic broadcast of Queer News Tonight uh, at the Manor Complex on Wilton Drive. It really was unique in all of America. Uh, last night, regardless of the outcome, um, is historic because it's the first time we've ever seen the two major candidates of uh, a state election, governor and U.S. Senate, come on the final night of the final joint effort of a campaign uh, to come to its final conclusion before voting begins, which is today, uh, and do it in a principally LGBTQ community. And in many of the conversations, Nikki Free, Debbie Wasserman Schultz, of course, Val Demings and Charlie Chris, uh, the conversation is how important the LGBTQ community was to them philosophically in their belief of support of the LGBTQ community, and also the importance of hoping to be the tip over to ensure that the LGBTQ community got out to vote today. At this hour, we don't know if that's what happened, uh, but last night was certainly historic in their efforts in support uh, of our LGBTQ community. Never seen um, in West Hollywood, never seen in San Francisco, never seen in Greenwich Village, what we saw in Walton Manors in Fort Lauderdale last night. But Al, do you think it made sense to be in a community that had probably already voted, that was already going to go Democrat if it was going to go Democrat as the last stand? <clears throat> Hillary Clinton did that during her presidential run. And I remember being in the room and everyone I knew had already voted. And where the need really is, is in, in, in areas where there is still a chance of winning some folks over. And I, I think it's great that they chose the LGBTQ community to be in our community for their last debate, but I wonder whether that was wasting good energy that could have gone to maybe change a few more votes. We just talked about the last election only won by over 6,000. That's just a handful of people out of several million. Well, you know, to your question, the answer is we don't know yet. Right. Um, well, it's 8, 8 uh, p.m. Uh, the polls have closed in Florida and uh, they're counting the votes. What What is at play, I think, at your question is did the LGBTQ community turn out? The people in the room, interestingly, last night, we talked about this at dinner, had dinner at Bona, uh, many of us had dinner at Bona after, uh, after this event. The room was principally filled not with LGBT, on Wilton Drive. Wow. How did that happen? Um, their efforts are designed to ring the bell to LGBT, have LGBT leaders, um, advocates, activists say this is important this is important get out and vote i don't know it's uh, you know at, uh, sitting now at 809 p.m here on tuesday night uh, we're nervous about what we're getting ready to see campaigning part of campaigning getting out to vote is always important Absolutely. and you know the the get out the vote mechanism might actually save us in the Senate, especially in certain in certain states where people are coming out to support their candidate. People can simply stay home. Historically, historically, midterm elections are generally low turnout elections. Mm -hmm. 
Right. I mean, we you this know. year seems to be an yeah. exception to that because yeah, of what's on the so. on the yeah. on the ballot right now. You know, but one last thought to it because we're going to talk about uh, this election uh, and voting today many times in through our stories that we're doing. Um, the one soundbite that I want to put back on the table is the story here is not whether they win or not. The mm -hmm. story is that all of them came together mm -hmm. on Wilton Drive mm -hmm. in the middle of the LGBTQ community in this historic year of anti-LGBTism from Ron DeSantis and Marco Rubio. Right. Remember Marco Rubio's comment yeah. of going, "Why? what a tremendous waste of time gay marriage right. is. Uh, all of these candidates come together united in a LGBTQ community. We're showing you some of the images from last night come together to say, oh, no, 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 LGBT is important. Win or lose, this is a great springboard for the next two years in terms of our community. LGBTQ plus news is vital for our community and for the broader world as a whole. We have enough enemies at Fox News. Tucker, Sean, and Lara are loud. We need passionate allies. Happening Out Television Network, Queer News Tonight, and It's Happening Out are literally out of the closet and into the headlines. Our community needs your support. Like this broadcast and subscribe now to ensure the growth of the entire LGBTQ plus community.